All right, well, you guys have not seen me in about a week. Uh, that's because I was out of town, but now I'm back. And uh, the fish are doing great. The ponds are doing good. But right before I left, I did start to notice some algae starting to grow uh, in the pool pond, the new pool pond that we just set up last week. And I figured that by the time I got back, uh, it would be everywhere in the pond. It's just kind of part of it. And sure enough, it was. And you can literally look at any part in the pond and you can see this hair algae uh, just kind of everywhere. You can see it right here on the sides. And it, you know, it's not real stuck on or anything. It'll come right off. And I could spend a good hour or so going around and wiping off all these sides, stirring up the sand and all that, trying to make it look good again. And then a day or two later, it's going to be right back. This is kind of how this algae works in an outdoor pond. The water's fine. The water's not uh, green at all, actually. I have not even turned the UV sterilizer on just yet, which by the way is only going to keep the water from turning green. It's not going to have any effect on whether algae grows in the pond or not. That's still going to happen. And you know what? The newness of the pond, it's going to start to wear off. It is already starting to wear off. And this is more of how it should look, in my opinion. It's, it's supposed to look more natural like this. I do think that once the pond becomes more well established, I do think some of this algae will start to kind of go away. Uh, it won't be quite, kind of as widespread as it is, and I don't think it'll be as thick on the sand. We'll just have to see, but I know the same thing happened uh, in a couple other ponds in the past, and the same thing happened in this pond right here, which is more of the subject of today's video. So this pond is where some of these fish came out of. By the way, they're doing great. Um, I wish I could spot one right now. They're just not out. Most of them, I think, are underneath this rock. Yeah, I can see the Oscar peeping his head out down there. Uh, but anyways, the largemouth peacock, the Oscar, and the bigger bullhead catfish, they all came out of this 300-gallon pond last week. And uh, I moved all of my bigger comets and chibunkins and baby koi out of an even smaller pond into here. And they're doing great. They're a lot more active in here. And uh, you can see... We have uh, not much algae going on here. None of that real long, hairy string algae that we have in there because these goldfish do a really, really good job of keeping that cut back. And we also have two turtles in here, which are doing great. They do not bother the fish at all. They're just two yellow belly sliders. They've been with fish for a while now, and uh, they've never bothered them. When you give them a pond this side, size and you keep them well fed and all the fish are decent size, usually they don't mess with them unless it's something you know, more predatory like a soft shell or a snapping turtle or something like that. That's a little bit different. But today what we're going to do is I'm going to move my two marble char catfish uh, from inside outside into that pond over there. They're doing fine right now. I've got them inside with my Jack Dempsey in a 46 gallon tank. They're growing all right. At least one of them is, but I think they would grow faster if I took them out of that tank and put them into an outside pond where they have a lot, lot more room to grow. And obviously that pond would not be where they were at long term. The long term plan for them is to go in here. But they're just not big enough just yet. But what it is, is nothing in here is going to bother them. Stuff in here might. That's why they're going to go in here first. Get to about around 9 or 10 inches or so. And then move them into here. Now as I said, I've got two of them. And one of them, the blind one actually, is now considerably bigger than the other one. Let me show you. Drop some shrimp pellets in there. And they will be out and about in about five seconds. Oh, 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 here they come. All right, so that right there is the bigger one, and that right there is the smaller one. You can see now that one is, like I said, considerably bigger than that other one. Uh, I have not shown these guys in a couple of weeks, and uh, they've definitely done some growing, at least that one has. And that's the blind one, actually. He tends to eat more, and it's just more active than the other one. So... Uh, I don't think it's necessarily a fact of dominance. I really don't. It's just that smaller one is not as active as that one right there is. And uh, he just seems to get more of the food. And I did think about maybe just moving the bigger one out there and leaving the smaller one in here till he got a little bit bigger and then throwing them out there. I think I'm going to go in and just put both of them out there. That way they can both start to grow even faster. Because uh, if I leave this little one in here, in fact, I actually had that smaller one in here before I moved the bigger one in here for a little while and he just was not as active. This one is just more active and tends to eat more than that other one and sometimes you get fish that are like that. You can't really explain it. So I know my big Jack Dempsey is going to be glad that I'm moving them both out of here and uh, hopefully they are as well that they will have more room. And these catfish tend to prefer more of a sandy type bottom which is what that pond has. So uh, they should like that a lot more. All right, well, Ziploc bag and a net. That's all you need. Definitely was not easy catching these guys, but we got them. Yeah, look at that. Look how much this other one has grown compared to the other one. The other one has definitely grown since I've had him, but that one right there has grown 
a lot more. Alright, let's set them on in there and let them start acclimating. We got some frozen krill. This is also another food that I feed uh, not only the marble catfish, but also some of my other bigger predatory fish. And I also feed it to the turtles. And even the bigger goldfish, they'll eat it as well. So I'm going to feed the turtles really quickly. Oh, oh, here he comes. This is the little bit smaller one. Look at that. Eat right out of my hand. I've trained this guy for about a year and a half now, so he is very, very well used to me. The other one's actually even bigger and uh, even older, so I've had him longer. There's the other one over there. See him peeking his head out? Look at that. Come on. What are you doing? So you get all the goldfish all stirred up and everything, too. And look at them. They'll eat it, too. Look at that. You know, it, and it's, this ain't something you should feed, you know, goldfish all the time, of course. It's really high in protein, but... If anything, it is really, really good for the color. You know, anything kind of with that reddish pink in it, being fed to fish that have that same similar color like parrotfish or goldfish or oscars, it can definitely enhance that red. Give them one more piece. Come on, get it, get it, got it. Look at that. There's the large mouth right there. He knows I'm about to feed him. He goes, got it. I'm actually really, really surprised the oscar's not out right now. The peacock, he tends to be a little more shy doesn't always eat when I feed you know the bass and the oscar but usually the oscar's out I'm surprised he's not out right now but we'll still go ahead and feed the bass I definitely don't show it on camera as much as I, as I should but uh, they definitely eat really really well you can see how fat he is right now that's why he is not feeding quite as aggressive as he usually would but here's the oscar he's being shy today let's see if we can get him to come out oh oh kind of hard to see over here but he got it there he is. I don't know why he's being so shy today. Now this is someone who also loves krill, my soft shell turtle. Are you going to freak out? Are you serious? I don't know why he still does this sometimes, but watch him. He's going to come right back out now. So we'll put some pieces in there for him. And I've shown this before, but watch how fast this sucker eats these pieces. Watch him. He's going to take a piece. Look at that. Gone. Watch his bigger piece. Not a problem at all. Look at that. It's just insane. Look at him. Look at that. Just gone. I mean, it's not a real big piece, but still. Watch him. Look at that. Just like it's nothing. It's just crazy. There is the other slider that just didn't want to come out a few minutes ago. But anyways, I think these catfish are pretty well good to go now. They've been acclimated for the past 20 minutes. Let's go and get them out of this bag into the pond. All right, guys. Here we go. Both of them going in. Going to get it on the GoPro. There they go. Check that out. Let's see where they go. Man, they look so small in here. It's crazy. There's actually a boy catfish in here. So I have two of them. One's in the big pond, one's in here. And the one that is in here is about the same size as uh, these two marble shark catfish. So it's going to be fun to watch these guys grow in this pond, see how big they get. Obviously, we won't be able to see them. Uh, quite as much in here as we could in the tank, obviously, and uh, it will be kind of hard to judge now that they're in a pond and no longer a tank, just how big they really are, uh, but I really, really want to see this smaller one start to grow faster, because that bigger one really has put on some size in the last few weeks, uh, but this smaller one's kind of getting left behind, so I really, really want to start to see this one uh, grow a little bit faster, so uh, hopefully that will happen in this pond, and uh, just from having more room to grow, and hopefully he also is able to get more food to eat in this pond as well. So we'll just have to see. And as I've been mentioning, if you guys have any suggestions as to what I should add to either the 300-gallon pond or the 800-gallon pond as far as structure, just something in particular, or even fish-wise, please let me know down below. I think that pond now, that 300-gallon, is kind of where I want it as far as fish and even uh, everything about it honestly I just kind of want to see where it goes um, and the fish and everything but this pond right here we've definitely got some more stuff to add to it the Florida Gar of course those two catfish once they get big enough uh, even the boy catfish out of there will eventually move into here and probably a few other things that just have not decided exactly what just yet so if you guys have any suggestions though and if there's something in particular that you guys want me to get for that pond and you think it would be good in there then please just drop a comment below so Thank you guys for watching as always though, and with that being said, catch you guys in the next video. Peace.